it's a single project, but it's in two parts. The single object is a concrete form and it's a sign. So it's sculptural, but it's also a language based object. And then the other piece is based in a powder magazine and it's discovered via a sign. So you enter the work via the QR code on the door of the building. And that takes you in to the website, which has a number of other works inside it. It's something that's working between a more determined sculptural form and questions of language and how you describe things. Part of what it does is think about how you might describe a particular action, like the action of walking, and how that becomes something that's interrupted by the flow of language that starts to get in the way of that, the actual act of walking. I was interested in histories of migration to Gravesend and the importance of community groups as spaces of resistance and spaces that hold alternative knowledge. And there's two parts to the work. There is the sculpture and some sound. The sculpture, it looks like a, a full marble wave of water with a, a head protruding from it, which has long hair tied up into a top knot. And the sound is made in collaboration with Ayn Bailey and the Sahili Women's Group um, through a series of listening workshops. Both the sculpture and the sound, they think about where knowledge is held and the spiritual and the sacred significance of, of practices that have moved over with people and I think the most important part of the work is perhaps the site. It holds such a resonance with the community and the histories that are being spoken about. The sculpture is of an Iraq war veteran in the UK named Daniel Taylor. The story that leaves me breathless in this whole sort of process that we've been through together was when I visited London and the sculpture was about to be cast. I visited Daniel for dinner at his home and he said, I, I have something for you. And he brought out a bag that had the items he wanted to go into the sculpture. And at the very bottom of the bag was his medal. And I, I said to him, listen, we spoke about this and you told me that it's proof of service and it's proof that allows for veterans to get the care that they need and that it was a kind of currency. He said, yeah, but it's time to spend it. And so one of the things that you'll see in that sculpture is his medal, which for me is the center of gravity of the work because it stands there in solidarity with all the other items that People from Veterans for Peace and local residents of Kent have, have donated to go into that, to that sculpture. Making a bit of research, I uh, discovered this uh, Folkestone place uh, was like a Roman place also. And that took me to the uh, Roman uh, gods. Then I found this Janus head. So I decided to construct this huge head made out of plaster. The idea of this Janus head is to protect like the entrances. And this is a perfect place to do so because it is right in the cliffs um, that face uh, the other side uh, that, that is France in this case. So I thought it was an interesting place to uh, install this Janus head that protects and also see how people is living and how people is coming in. That's really interesting, like in these moments specifically, not only because of Brexit, also because of Corona. Hastings Contemporary has a kind of space that was almost made for a work like this, which is kind of outdoor courtyard. I was always fascinated with these concrete blocks that they put inside the water to build seawalls, sort of protective barriers or breakwaters. And so I made a kind of facsimile of the seawall. It's a, a block made out of a composite foam and then covered with inkjet printed uh, vinyl upon upholstery. But it looks heavy and, and concrete and then it's like lightweight and soft. 
So people can use it to sit on and they sort of construct their own seawall. They become the work when the people use them. So they kind of look like a sculpture, but then they also the work is completed when the public decides to interact or not. So putting it out in public is a, is a very important part of that process. The work is a three-part sculpture that's made from various conjuring materials and the work wraps itself on the grass and then through the building itself extends your sight kind of under the ground in a way. I was thinking a lot about the building itself of the Delaware as something that stands like a kind of architectural cliff on the edge of the sea. I was thinking a lot about edges as this idea of breakdown and erosion but also a barrier. This idea of the worm became a really important metaphor for that as something that can bypass borders, infiltrate edges and what that does to like the outline of something. Worms literally sink foundations or rocks through um, undermining and burying under them. Um, so it's these kind of like little actions with big consequences. I hope kind of creates another kind of atmosphere of something that is more related to sci-fi or something as well. It's, it's kind of monstrous and it's, it's quite literal in that sense, but, but it takes on this kind of specific form or specific character and that feels quite different from my other work. Well, this work started from the idea of making an image in a landscape and also recovering the story of uh, two women from Eastbourne. One is the Lichi woman, which are the human remains that were found uh, in a beach. And the second are also the human remains of uh, another uh, woman more from the 16th century. And I kind of put these two stories together and I converted it into a giant profile of an imaginary female character. The visitors of the project can walk through this uh, path that will be partially drawn on the floor and there will be also objects that are related to, to the archaeological findings that we made replicas of and we embedded them into the concrete. So it's a bit of a search and find a project that it's partially visible and partially invisible.